Welcome back guys. I've got a new accessory to unbox. So let's see what we've got today, shall we? This is Nissi's 10 stop ND filter that I recently purchased. But this isn't all the filters I've got, so let me go get them real quick. So, this is my full filter set. It's all from Nissi. As you can see, I do have quite a few filters here. And we're not going to add the 10 stop to it. So, do that first because I know this Velcro can be quite noisy. I thought this would be an ideal time to do a review on it because I've had pretty much all of these filters except the night filter for about two years now. And also, as I was planning this video, be gentle. Nissi has actually just released their V7 system and I've got the V6. I'll give you guys a review on what I think of the V6 after having used it for two years. Eh, 10 stops, nice and dark. Quick disclaimer, Nissi is not actually paying me to review these filters. I got all of these with my own money. I went to the store and bought them myself after quite a bit of research. So this is all purely my opinion on it. It's not paid for by anybody to actually review them. Why did I get the Nissi system? Well, I did quite a bit of research before I got these actually because there's so many brands out there. You've got Nissi, Hoya, Polar Pro, Lee. I'm sure I'm missing a few. There's a few new ones that have just come out as well. But I wanted to get something that was easily available down here at Sydney where I could go to most photography camera shops and they would have the filters I need, or at least they could order it in pretty quickly as well. Or even just order it online direct from Nissi themselves and get it shipped over here to where I live without too much drama. Why did I also go with the square filter instead of the round ones? Because you can get round filters that will fit perfectly onto your lens, whatever size they may be, instead of the square ones. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One reason is, like I mentioned, I've always got this on my lens anyway. So it's a lot easier to just attach this to the camera versus having to always screw on another filter when you need it. And also I initially, when I first started getting into filters, I made the mistake of buying a filter that was only needed for the lens I had at the time, which in most cases is fine. But if you ever get a lens that needs a bigger filter thread, you then have to go and buy another filter. Whereas in this case, the filter holder is 82 millimeters. You attach the step down ring as needed. In this case, it's from 82 down to 77 and then you can just attach any of the square ones regardless of what size lens you've got. There are lots of other filters you can choose from besides neutral density filters like I've got. You've got the graduated ones like a soft and medium or hard grad. You can get mist filters, which if I ever upgrade the lens on my Sony camera, I may look into because of the softening effect it has on the highlights in your videos. But for the type of photography I use, this is pretty much the only type of filters I'll ever need. Now that you know why I got the Nissi filters, I'll just quickly say the order I got them in so you know which ones I went with. And then I'll talk about the good parts, the bad parts, and if you should actually upgrade to the V7 system if you're like me and you've got the V6 system. So let's start with the order I got them in. So the first kit I got was the polarizer kit because you do get quite a bit of kit with it. You get the filter holder, so you can put in three filters and attach it to whichever lens you're using at a particular time. You do get this pretty cool lens cap, which I have lost before when I went out to take pictures at Shark Beach. So this is actually a replacement. This is the adapter ring that lets you hold the circular polarizer as well as the filter adapter, the polarizer itself. And then you do get three step up rings. I've only just got the one because this one fits perfectly to my lens. And I can't for the life of me find the other two, which isn't an issue because I've only got one lens anyway. And what I like about it is that 99% of the time, the step ring, the polarizer, and the adapter are always sitting on my lens anyway. So I never have to worry about swapping it out and because I've only got the one lens to start with for now. This filter holder is actually an 82 millimeter thread. So whilst my lens is 77 millimeters, I can use this step ring to adjust it accordingly. So this goes onto the front element of the lens. And then you can screw this on top and then the circular polarizer on top of that as well. So once that's there, you always have the lens cap on there. Granted, it means you can't use a lens hood, but I've never been finding myself thinking, you know what, why can't I take this off and put my lens hood on instead because I'm just so used to not using it now. One thing I do like as well about the polarizing kit is you actually do get this nice little carry bag for everything, which 
Because this is almost always sitting on my camera lens itself, I've never actually had to use this when I'm out in the field. It's, it's normally sitting there collecting dust and storage. And after the polarizing kit, I went and got these two neutral density grab filters, which is a three stop and a six stop. And I deliberately got them over graduated, like soft, medium or hard graduated filters, because when I did a bit of reviews on them, I'd much rather have to blend two separate exposures in Photoshop myself versus add a filter in, make sure it's at the right angle, and then hope that it's graduated properly in the camera versus trying to do it myself later in post to fix any issues that may be from the graduation. So I thought, you know what, get a three and a six stop, change the exposures as necessary, blend them together in Photoshop. And since I enjoy being on the computer, it's not an issue for me anyway. After the three and the six stop, I did go and purchase the natural night filter review because I did see some pretty good reviews on it. And since I do quite a bit of cityscape photography at night, I thought I'd buy it and give it a go and see how it works. So if you would like to see my review on that filter specifically, I'll put a link in the description below for you and you can check it out as well. As you know, now today I've got a 10 stop and I got the 10 stop because sometimes you really just want a really long exposure. And if you look at this one, I'll hold it up compared to a three stop for you. That's a three stop that's a 10 stop. So a three stop, you still can sort of see through, but this 10 stop is almost pitch black. Quick side note, if there are any specific pictures you'd like to see regarding any of these filters, like how they would actually be used and applied in landscape photos like this one above me, please let me know in the comments below. Now, because it is quite fun to see how the pictures change when you go from like a three or six and now a 10 stop and see what you can get out of it. And I'm actually quite excited to go use the 10 stop because lockdown's ending soon. I hope anyway. Now we've discussed what filters I've got, why I got them, the order I got them in. Now let's go over the good and the bad parts about these filters. And I'll do the good first because there's definitely, there's definitely more good than bad. The bad ones are nitpicking, so I'll get to them in a second. And probably the best feature about these filters is the quality of the glass actually. I don't baby my equipment in any way, shape of the imagination. If you've seen my tripod review that I did a couple weeks ago, you'll see that even after one year, it's already covered in scratches and a lot of that year has been stuck in lockdown. But with these filters, I don't baby it. I keep them in the filter holder that comes with it actually, because when you buy these two as a set, you do get this filter holder with them. Do look after it, but I don't baby it. And even after two years, there's no scratches on any of them anywhere. I mean, granted, yes, the filter holder has a few small dents in it, but that doesn't affect my photos in any way, shape or form. So in that respect, you are getting some properly some proper quality out of these. I really can't fault the quality of the glass itself. They do have some nano coating on it as well, which helps repel water and oil, which has only really been an issue when I was using the polarizer when I was out taking photos like to a metal or sharp point. So quick wipe with the microfiber cloth and you're pretty much good to go again, actually. For anyone using filters, there's two important features that they will always factor in, which I have not noticed with any of these. One of them, because my lens simply won't let me, which is vignetting. They say that you won't get any vignetting on something like a 16 to 35, but as this goes as wide as 24, I can't actually verify that claim, but I'll take their word for it. And an important feature to anybody in photography is color. I can confidently say I've never had color degradation from using any of these filters. As you can see from these pictures from Termeta Beach, this one here didn't have a filter on it. This one did. This one actually had a three stop on it. That's why the water looks different. But if you look at the actual colors of the water and the rocks themselves, they are identical, which is very important because I do not want to be spending time in post thinking, uh oh, I've used a three or a six stop filter. How has it messed up my colors and how much time do I need to spend fixing it? So the fact that there are no color changes from adding these filters in front of your lenses is brilliant because it saves me time in post. So that's a great thing is that there is no color change or color shift or color loss by adding any of these filters in front of your lenses. One nice little feature about the neutral density filters specifically, I should say, is they do have a foam core on the back of each of them, which helps prevent light leakage from what I've seen, because if you didn't have that, there's going to be a tiny one millimeter gap in between the filters themselves or the filter and the lens, which when you're doing a long exposure can lead to a massively overexposed photo. Whereas with that foam there, it does prevent it from occurring. So you're safe with the knowledge knowing that there won't be any unnecessary light leakage into your photo which will then potentially waste time having to guess how much shorter your exposure has to be, take it again, and hopefully you haven't lost whatever it is you were taking photo of. Now that we know that the neutral densities are pretty good, what about the rest of the kit? I actually can't find too many faults with them either because they're actually quite well put together. The filter holder itself 
it's made out of some metal. I think it's like an aluminium alloy or something. It does have the two knobs, one to actually help attach it to the filter holder. And the top one is to actually lock it in place so that it doesn't move, which most of the time it won't be an issue. But if you're doing long exposures, you want to try and minimize any potential for camera shake. So that's why you would lock it in place. Or if you've rotated it for use with a graduated filter, you want to make sure it doesn't change the angle during a long exposure as well. The step ring, the only downside I'll say about the step ring is that because it was on that lens for so long, it was a nightmare to take off. But beyond that, it's done the job. It hasn't felt like there's been an issue with it since I've used it. And the filter holder itself, one thing I do like about it is it's got these two little dials on the side which make changing or applying the polarizing and using the polarization effect of the polarizer very easy because you don't have to reach around to try and add polarizing to your photo you just need to move your thumb on it so that makes life a lot easier that way and beyond that i never use the actual case it comes with because all of that's always attached to the camera so this just sits loosely in the bag next to this one which actually holds all my filters in there i can't just praise it and not tell you if there's anything to be aware of because that simply wouldn't be fair. Otherwise, you might go buy this based on my recommendation, you'll find something you don't like and then it's my fault, which I also don't want to happen. So there are a few things to bear in mind, but I did have, I am nitpicking a little bit because I've been using, well, except those two, these filters for two years now and I really do struggle to find an issue with them. The biggest issue I've got more than anything is that they're a bit of a dust magnet. This filter, no matter how many times I clean it, either with an air blower or a microfiber cloth, always seems to attract dust on it, which can drive me nuts. Wiping water off was never an issue, even salt water when I was taking photos out by the beaches. But for whatever reason, getting dust off it is always a bit of a nightmare. So I would use a microfiber cloth and an air blower at the same time is the, sometimes the only way to do it. The other one, it's more just pay attention to what you're doing than an actual fault with the filters themselves. Because when you're attaching the filter to the filter holder just make sure you've actually attached them in properly this way where it's flat because if you're not paying attention it's very easy to go front and middle and then you will have light leakage and then you will have a ruined photo out of that so it's you can pick and say that oh they're too close together whatever the case may be but if you're just paying attention to what you're doing when you're actually attaching the filters or sliding them into place it's never actually going to be an issue I have done it on a few occasions and luckily I noticed it before I went click. So I was able to rectify it first, but it's just something to be aware of. It's not an actual fault of the filters. It's a fault of the user, in this case, me. And the last one I'll say, which is nitpicking a little bit, and that is the price. But in saying that, in Nissi's defense, and granted, don't forget, I'm not being paid by Nissi to say this, but the quality you're getting for the price you're paying, I think it's bloody good value for money. I have seen other filters out there. I saw a variable ND for like $600 and I couldn't see the reason for it because the reviews that came out of it were mixed. It's you are literally playing, pay, paying for a brand name. But this set, this set, if you got it in the way I did, would set you back about $1,500 odd dollars roughly. Which if you think about it, I've got a polarizer, a filter holder, adapter, filter holder, three, six, 10 stop and a night filter and the carrying cases for them. For 1500 it's actually not that bad, considering I've been using them for two years and I haven't been able to find a fault with it. The only issue is if I haven't attached filters properly to the filter holder. So there are other filters that are cheaper. There are other filters that are more expensive. I think these are very good value for money, actually, so I can't actually say the price is a negative now that I think about it. It's actually bloody good because I have seen price, I have seen filters that are significantly more expensive than this set, and I'm very happy with this set, so... I can't fault it. One thing I will say about pricing when it comes to filters though, is get the best one you can afford, even if you can't get it straight away. And by that, I mean is if you know you're gonna be using filters extensively the way I do, like nearly every time I've gone out, I've used, I definitely use the polarizer and I'll often use the three or the six stop and sometimes the night filter. And like I said, I'm excited to go and try the 10 stop. But if you're not 100% certain as to whether you will get fully invested into a system like this, then go and get around one that suits the lens you've got. Get one for the largest lens you've got and then just get the step down ring so that you can attach it to your other lenses as well. And then you have a good idea as to whether or not you're actually going to use them extensively because otherwise, if you go and spend $1,500 on a set like this, use it once a year, 
probably not the best option. Whereas I use it all the time, very good return on investment. Get the best one you can. If you have to save up for an extra two or three months before you can get a set like this, I'd say do that because otherwise you could spend like five, six hundred dollars on an average at best set and then have to spend fifteen hundred dollars again anyway. You've just actually gone and wasted five hundred dollars for no good reason. So save up a little bit, get a set like this if that's exactly what it is you want to do. But otherwise, get the cheap one and test it out first. So with all of this said and done, which I hope everything I've said today makes sense regarding these filters, because I do generally enjoy using them and I do recommend them to anybody who does ask about filters. I will happily say Nissies are great. Will I actually be upgrading from the V6 to the V7? The short answer is no. The long answer is I can't see it justifying itself enough for me to actually upgrade the system. Granted, yes, with the filter holder, you do have these two knobs and now combined into one. So you have one to pull and it's the same one to screw and lock it into place as well. And attaching the polarizer to the filter adapter is a lot easier because they've got vertical marks on there now so that you can line it up a lot quicker. But as I mentioned, since these are always sitting on my camera itself, that's not enough of a reason for me to upgrade the whole system because there is nothing wrong with this whole set right here. It has always done the job perfectly and until it breaks or something goes wrong with it, I'm not going to upgrade. In saying that, I'm not going to deliberately damage them so I can upgrade because, as I mentioned earlier, these aren't the cheapest things in the world and I'd rather spend the money for a new set on saving up for a new lens. Will I upgrade? No, not unless something goes wrong with this set, which, fingers crossed, it doesn't because I do like it and I don't want to have to buy a set unless it's necessary. In saying that, though, if you don't have a set yet and you are planning on getting a set like this, then I would say go for the V7 because it seems that attaching the polarizer to the holder and also the filter adapter itself as well does seem like it is a step in the right direction so it will make sense to go with the latest and greatest versus taking a step back when you don't need to and i think at the time i'm recording this the price difference between the two is like 40 dollars australian or something so it makes sense to just go for the better one as well get whichever one is best for you it depends on your particular needs if you do have any questions leave a question down below in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I hope everything I've said today makes sense. I hope you guys enjoy this review of the Nissi V6 filter system. Not the V7, I don't have it yet. Maybe I will one day, we'll see. If you do have any questions about anything I've mentioned today, please leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you have liked this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. That would be greatly appreciated. And if you want to stay up to date with future videos, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and tick that little bell. And I'll see you in the next video. I hope I haven't rambled on too much. I'll stop rambling now and I'll see you on the next one. Have a good night.